Well, hello, hello. My name is Pastor Sean, and I have your word for the day. Uh, question. What do you think a sunset, God's word, and God's forgiveness and grace have in common? Psalm 19 answers it pretty clearly and in such a beautiful way. But there are three parts to it and an ending statement that answers this question and ties each part together. The first part of the Psalms 19 talks about the raw beauty and power of nature. And every moment that we experience nature, nature is talking to us and it's communicating to us without words. Do you know what it's saying? Psalm 19, one through four says this, the, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them, yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. Each sunset, each storm, each windy day, each snowy day, each blistering hot day, we know about those, each perfect spring day, is all communicating one thing. God is awesome. God is powerful, holy, good, perfect, creative, and worthy of our worship. The second part of Psalm 19 describes God's holy word, his scripture. Psalm 19, 7 through 11 says this, the law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing for the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure and enduring. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. And by them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. Sweeter than honey and more precious than gold. The second part of Psalm 19 is a love letter to Scripture itself. Through God's Word, He displays His goodness and power. His Word is refreshing, full of wisdom, joyful, a light in the dark, enduring, righteous in a wrong world, and precious and sweet. His Word is showcasing not just what it can do for us, but also who God is. The third part of today's Psalm talks about how God's goodness and awesomeness extends to us by His grace, and his forgiveness. The third part is a recognition that we are powerless to the sinful destruction of this world. Psalm 19, 12 through 13 says this, but who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. And verse 13, keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I'll be blameless, innocent of great transgression. We can't do this life on our own. We can't even discern our own errors without his goodness to reflect upon. Even in the sins we know about, we are powerless to stop in our lives, as Paul even describes in Romans 7. But God keeps us from these things. God forgives, protects, frees, wipes away sins to, to anyone who seeks Him and believes in Him in their hearts. Each part of this psalm is so beautiful and powerful, and here's where it all comes together. Verse 14. Verse 14 brings purpose and connection to each of these three different parts. Uh, may these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord my rock and my redeemer. What does a sunset, God's word and God's grace have in common? Each of these are meant to bring us to a place of awe and wonder, a place of submission to God, and more importantly, a place of realization that God is so good and so awesome and so amazing that we pale in comparison to him. Here's the truth, God doesn't give us beautiful skies, unending wisdom and grace beyond grace for us to sit back and go, wow, what a beautiful world we live in. No, each and every part of this life from a rainstorm to the scriptures in the Bible is meant to point out the goodness and power and glory of our God and cause us to reflect. Just like verse, verse 14, oh my God, your beauty and your power is immense. I can only hope that my words and my meditations are pleasing to you. In light of your glory, I am nothing, and yet you choose to display your gl glory to me through your nature. You choose to bless me with your commands. You choose to forgive and love me when I am full of sin and in need of your guidance and grace every single day. Through all of these things, God not just shows us how pretty the sky can be. He brings us to the place of awe and submission where we recognize how amazing He is. And so today, I want to ask you to ask yourself a question. Are you seeing God's glory in everything around you? Are you recognizing how much you fall short and how much you need His greatness in your life? Take time today 
to notice his glory in everything, and then pray to God thanking him for all of these reminders of his amazing glory and how much you need him. Have a blessed day, Calvary. We'll see you later.